So we are yes, doing the live on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, we are live on Facebook. Yeah, Umesh Patil, sir, please start. Uh, good, good afternoon, one and all. It, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome all of you in the opening ceremony of webinar series summer 2022. In this webinar series, we are organizing webinars on diverse topics in pharmacy. I, first of all, I would like to thank Diva Party University, Navi Mumbai, our principal, Dr. Rakesh Somani, sir, for giving us opportunity to organize this webinar series. I would like to request our principal, Mr. Dr. Rakesh Somani, sir, to open the session and introduce today's expert or speaker, Mr. Narendra Mohan. Thank you, sir. Please take over. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mish Patil. So, Good afternoon, rather good evening to one and all present on this platform. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome Professor Dr. Narendra Babu uh, all the way from Malaysia to uh, start and inaugurate this particular event today. That is a webinar series summer 2021. Dear students and all the participants who are joining us from uh, different social media platforms, I, Dr. Akesh Somani, the principal of D.Y. Patil University School of Pharmacy, Navi Mumbai, welcome each one of you for this summer webinar series, which is our unique initiative of the School of Pharmacy uh, for the betterment of the pharmacy education and awareness about it. I wish to inform all of you that the School of Pharmacy was established in year 2019 under the ambit of D.Y. Patil University, Navi Mumbai, and we started with two programs, that is Diploma Pharmacy Program and Degree Pharmacy Program. I'm happy to inform all of you that the PhD program in pharmaceutical sciences is already been approved by the university from the academic year 2021. And from this July 2021, we are commencing with PhD in pharmaceutical sciences. With this, since our first batch of the Diploma Pharmacy will be graduating this year, we always feel that we should give better and better opportunities for our students to learn new and newer things into the field of pharmaceutical sciences. And that's why this summer webinar series is organized. Under the blessings of Honorable Padma Shri, Dr. D.Y. Pati, and under the mentorship of Dr. Vijay Patil sir and Mrs. Shivani Patil madam, the entire team of School of Pharmacy is striving hard to make this particular institution as the center of excellence in the pharmacy education across the country. And in a very short period of time, this institution has done a lot of students' initiative activities, and we have been preferred as one of the uh, important destination for pharmacy education. Slowly, steadily, the institution aims to develop, uh, to develop its capacities as a research institution in years to come. Coming to the summer webinar series, we feel that our students should get diverse knowledge and that's why this webinar series has been actually planned for. And today we are inaugurating this webinar series at the hands of none other than one of the uh, dedicated academician and a scientist, drug discovery scientist, I should say, uh, Dr. Narendra Babu, he is from Malaysia. I am really glad to have him here and I'm thankful to you, Dr. Narendra, uh, for your kind presence on this platform. I would like to introduce Dr. Narendra to all of you and this, the CV goes, uh, a very heavy CV uh, it is. So he has an experience of 20 years in the field of pharmaceutical education and research. He is also a postdoc uh, from, the Malaysia, from the Malaysian University, experience in the drug discovery and designing from the Cardiff University. In Taylor's University, he has spent 10 years of his career and now presently involved as a freelancer into drug discovery and design. My dear students and all the participants who are attending this particular webinar, please have a great interaction with the today's speaker as he himself is stalwart into the uh, area of pharmaceutical research and education. And hence, more the interaction happens, there will be more information you can gather from this particular webinar. And I'm sure Dr. Narendra Babu will be able to answer all these uh, uh, all your queries. So you can put your questions into the chat box and at the end of the session, we will take those questions. And if uh, things permit, then we will also have a one-on-one -on -one interaction. I hope those who are switching off the cameras and listening to this webinar, they are there behind the camera and taking serious note of the same. 
with these few words i welcome dr narendra babu once again and i am really happy that you accepted our invitation and please i i request you to announce that you have inaugurated this summer webinar series 2021 over to you dr narendra thank you okay <clears throat> thank you prof rakesh somani uh, one of my uh, good old friend so for a very beautiful introduction uh, but most of the things i did name because we are pharmacists right so we need to be we are very down to earth so this is a very uh, interactive sharing session so because i also last time i was a student and then i was working in uh, pharmaceutical industry then i was there in pharmaceutical teaching teaching pharmacy students so it's just an interactive session so i i just want to share my experience with you guys so we are all same huh? so there is nothing like okay i am your senior i know a lot of things nothing like that it's just experience in life so we can have a sharing session informal sh uh, sharing session so i at the same time i thank uh, uh, dy patil uh, institute uh, i just went through the web so looks like very promising uh, university coming up so i wish uh, the university uh, a great uh, future uh, to produce a lot of uh, a uh, pharmacist of uh, eminence so i thank uh, the university to give me a chance to share my little knowledge uh, in this field of pharmacy um uh before uh, um, yeah uh, as uh, prof rakesh somani has uh, requested so i uh, i am opening these sessions uh hopefully all these sessions will be beneficial for you guys uh, to increase your uh, pool of experience and it will help you in your future careers okay uh, thank before you. i start thank you prof so before i start maybe i just want to share my experience uh, as a teacher uh, i think uh, two years before i met one uh, uh, eminent uh, person from bhutan uh, bhutan as you know very well uh, it's it's a very small country uh, and they have a philosophy called green uh, environment so that means the emission is very less in that country the people are very Uh, traditional they are very they, they stick to the old uh, things and the, this country uh, in each in, in most of the countries we have gdp right mm -hmm. gdp and we we measure the success of the countries uh, based on the economy so how how much they are developed what's what's the economy of the particular country but this bhutan is a very small country uh, this measure the success measure is in terms of happiness so they have a happiness index so every year they check the happiness index and then they say uh, how how the country is prospering that's a very great idea so at the same time they have another uh, philosophy called green education so green education in the sense like uh, uh, we go back to the old setting like a teacher and the student is there so there are the these are the two faces opposite faces uh, so these two spaces are uh, totally apart so as a teacher i'll be standing here and the students will be sitting there so we always think our worlds are totally different so i i think in my world and the students will be thinking in their world so we have two different spaces so they never meet so that's why when you come to the class when you are listening to a teacher so you always your mind is in a different uh, uh, in a different way in a different world so uh, he proposed that there should be a third space so a third space in the sense so in between these two worlds there should be a third world where a teacher and the students can interact so i lose i lose my identity as a teacher and the students lose their identity as students we mix together we learn we share our things in this process the, the main thing has to happen is the learning not my experience not my ego or the student experience or the student ego so there is a in this current times of uh, this learning education system we need to there is a need of creating a third space right so where we we go and we interact and we learn together so i applied the same thing in my class when i was working in taylor's university we had computer uh, aided drug design uh, practicals so i i i do the practical in that practical everything is easy the students can come in they can bring their coffee they can go they can grab their coffee so the things will be going on so we i we give i give a problem to them and they discuss 
and each students will interact each other they will they will discuss one student will help to solve the problem of another student so it's something like a learning in a third space where a teacher lose their identity and the students lose their identity so where the learning will happen to the maximum extent right so this is the background uh, when i met that particular guy from bhutan so we discussed about green education so hopefully why i am telling this story to you is in your education institution also the same thing happened where you you students mingle with your teachers and you create a third space and you learn so then there is a meaning for that learning and we carry that learning for in our future careers in our life and we excel in our life not only as a pharmacist but as a whole uh, uh, human being i think that's very very important okay uh, uh, with this uh, let me start with my uh, sharing session so i'm going to talk about uh, the research in pharmacy and at the same time uh, what kind of different kinds of careers which are available to you guys when you graduate from your pharmacy program uh can i share my slides professor somani yes please yes you have been given the right okay that's great yes it's visible it's visible okay that's great okay so um, just to give a background introduction for me um I did bachelor's and master's uh, in pharmacy from India, PhD also from India. Uh, then I came to Malaysia. Uh, I was working in drug discovery industry. We were working on anti-diabetes uh, drug discovery. I was in computer-aided drug design and together with synthesis part uh, in Bangalore uh, in Connexious Life Sciences. It was a very small company, startup company from Infosys Foundation. they were the they were the one who uh, funded this uh, uh, drug discovery company and later i came for my post doc in uh, in malaysia so where i was working on again drug discovery projects after that i went back to india i was teaching there then again i am back to malaysia i uh, i worked in taylor's university i was teaching medicinal chemistry uh, then some of the modules uh, related to uh, because in in uh, you guys pharmacy students if you know that in western countries and some other parts of the world pharmacy is integrated like we don't teach chemistry like a, a pharmaceutical chemistry we integrate everything like uh, we have chemistry part we have uh, pharmacology part we have clinical pharmacy part we together we build one module for example uh, neoplastic agents so if we take neoplastic agents anti cancer agents we don't teach anti cancer agents in chemistry in pharmacology in uh, clinical pharmacy what we do anti neoplastic agents will be made into one module we teach chemistry also we teach pharmacology we teach so we call it as integration most of the uh, parts of the world nowadays it's becoming integrated pharmacy program is becoming integrated so i taught in taylor's university some of the integrated modules and chemistry modules especially drug designing and synthesis modules uh then later now i am uh i am i'm i'm working as a consultant maybe education consultant i know about bit of a research and designing curriculums and all those things so i am working there so this is the introduction about myself i have that means i have a knowledge little bit knowledge in industry in production side something research then in uh, post doc my research teaching and at the same time uh, uh something related to administration like curriculum development and all those things okay this is my introduction um if you look into the pharmacy profession any profession nowadays maybe maybe in my during my father's time my father work he just hold to one job he just take up one job until he retired he will be working in the same job maybe my time the things have changed i won't be in the same job maybe i'll be working in one particular job for 10 years then afterwards i need to change the world is changing very dynamically okay you guys you are pharmacists going to be pharmacists later after your program so you you will be living in a very challenging times maybe in your career life of 30 to 40 years you will be changing you have to change different different jobs because the world is changing very fast 
in my slides you can see different roles of a pharmacist okay last time i was in industry i left i came to academics i was in production i was in research so i was in uh, teaching now i am doing some consultation so in the same way you people will be going through different different kinds of careers if you go into google the mother google if you search you know the times are changing very fast and nowadays it's artificial intelligence in singapore the hospital the pharmacies they cut down a lot of pharmacies now the robots they dispense the medicine the robots are dispensing medicines we are in a times where the technology is going very fast and artificial intelligence ai is taking care of everything okay so you guys as a pharmacist don't think okay oh we are studying this pharmacy program because oh why why you studied pharmacy program if you ask me a question oh i didn't get medicine i didn't get engineering uh, program so i choose pharmacy that may be the case in reality but the thing is when you go into the pharmacy program it's a very beautiful program you have a lot of opportunities you have a lot of uh, changes you can make yourself later in your careers you don't like uh, industry production you can work in production you can go into r and d you can go into academics later if you are interested you can do you, you can start your own pharmacy community pharmacy you have a lot of career opportunities in your pharmacy profession that's why it's a, it's a great profession and at the same time when you study pharmacy don't think you are just studying because or oh, you got uh, a seat in uh, dy patil institute of pharmacy so you are just studying because your parents told you okay you just study this program no okay that may be the case but when when you are already in year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 you are already you know responsible pharmacist you, you are going to become responsible pharmacist you are going to bring a lot of changes in this world to the community you may not believe but after my 20 years of experience i believe myself hey i am doing some changes you know i am helping people you will be helping you will be doing lot of different different careers you will be taking up you will be helping society you may be earning money for your livelihood with you may join somewhere and you may be getting a salary but at the same time you can do some some different kinds of research and you can contribute to the society so today i'll be discussing about career opportunities in pharmacy uh, research at the same time i'll be touching some other areas where you can contribute uh, as pharmacists okay uh, my slides are very informal we are having a sharing session so just relax have a cup of coffee with you and just go through uh, nothing is serious life is not serious okay uh, what 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 is interesting for you just carry on with that okay uh, what is meant by research now you guys are maybe some of you may be studying in year 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 okay so maybe in year 4 you'll be having some final year projects you'll do some small small projects uh that 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 means you are doing some research so why you have to do research and some of you may be doing post graduate you already know what is meant by research so in pharmacy major part is research if you take an example of india right so in india majority of the pharmacists who comes out from the university so where they go they go to industry most of the, most of the student most of you guys will be going to industry you won't go to hospital but some parts of the world like malaysia example most of our students they go to hospital they go and work in hospital as a hospital pharmacist so what they do is they dispense medicine doctor give prescription and prescription come to the pharmacist pharmacist will dispense the medicine then he the pharmacist discuss with the patients they will discuss and they give medicine and they will tell the uh, patient so how to use this medicines and all those things right so in india it's more into industry oriented so where you are more into industry so when you talk about industry again it's research most of the industry accept your formulation everything is research so that means as a pharmacist you always need to have that the particular bent of mind towards research then only you can excel otherwise you will be sitting in a hospital or you sit somewhere okay every month you are getting salary my job is done okay i do something how long you can do that job maybe 5 years maybe 10 years then you already got fed up and you know life is not interesting but when you go behind research whatever you do as a pharmacist you put research in that particular profession 
Okay, so then life is so interesting. It will drive you forever. Maybe you can work as a pharmacist for 50 years and you can take up different roles as a pharmacist. You can work in industry, in research, boring. Okay, you can do teaching. Again, you can teach research. Again, from research, you can go into community pharmacy. You can, you can give drugs to the, uh, you can sell and you can counsel the patients. At the same time, you can do research. So research, you should keep research as a main component in your pharmacy program. You know, studying pharmacy also, you should always think in that way. Okay, you should always uh, think, hey, why I should, why, why don't I do like this? Why don't I, I do like this? So research, what is meant by research? Research means you are increasing, you are creating something. You are creating a new knowledge. You are doing something and you are creating a new knowledge. And at the same time, you are creating a new application by doing research. Okay, so always you should keep research as a main component in your job, in your career, in your future careers. So then life is very interesting. Your job is your career is very, very interesting. You can make a lot of money also. Don't think, okay, you don't keep research, then you can make a lot of money. You can get name, you can get money, you can get job satisfaction. So many things when you put research into your, your pharmacy uh, career, whatever the career you take. Then types of research. Research means you need to create a new knowledge. So by creating a new knowledge, you can create new application. For example, as a pharmacist, okay, I'm a medicinal chemist. Okay, I can create a new knowledge. I can do some research and create a new drug, right? New knowledge, hey, I, I designed this particular drug. Okay, it, it, it's not effective on this particular disease. It's new knowledge. You can publish a paper, new knowledge. At the same time, you can, you can, dev you can de devise a new thing. That is a drug, okay? You can, you can, you can come out with a new drug for COVID like coronavirus, you can create a new drug, you can discover a new drug. So by doing research, you can create new knowledge and new devices or new things, okay? So types of, you can see the research is everywhere, not only in pharmacy, engineering or medicine, research is everywhere. You look at any subject in research perspective, life is very beautiful, it's very challenging. So every day is very, very interesting. And you always feel, hey, I'm pharmacist. You feel proud. Okay, it drives your life. So it drives everything. It, it, it can give you a lot of money. It can give you a lot of name, fame. Okay, so if you see uh, this slide, you can see research is everywhere. Scientific research is there. Engineers do research. Doctors do research. Pharmacists, we do research. Then even humanities, like when you study, you know, geography, when you study uh, anything, uh, maybe uh, sociology, if you study economics, everything in humanities also you have research. Then you want people, artistic people, many people they get, you know, they are big name in arts. Maniratnam is a big director, right? He's in art, he's in movies. Even people study, they do research on movies. So you, you, you may believe or not, when I was, working, when I was studying in uh, Belgaum with Dr. Professor Rakesh Somani, so I went to a university in Darwar. I saw a thesis. A thesis, a PhD thesis on a movie called Bombay, Maniratnam. People do PhD on arts, right? So that means research is everywhere. Why it is everywhere? Because that is a driving force for excelling a human being like you. It's a driving force. Otherwise we become very normal. Life is very normal. You go to job, okay, nine to five, done, 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 done. Go back home. You get promoted after 25 years after 30 years, after 40 years, and one day call will come, okay, we escape, we disappear from this world. No, you put this particular research into your profession, any of your career, any, 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 pro any career you take, you can see the science or humanities or arts, then the people can become big people. You are recognized by other people, right? So these are different kinds of research. So you can see scientific research, is based on science, you know, the girl, the beautiful girl is looking into computers and looking into some data, maybe an MR machine, she's getting an MR, she's recording an MR, nuclear magnetic resonance, right? It's, it's a research. She's looking what is there inside that. And somebody uh, down there who is looking into how a drug is interacting with a protein, right? How is drug is interacting with some other protein. So it gives a lot of idea. It's a research, it's scientific research. It's science. And even if you look into even science, we have different kinds of research called as quantitative and qualitative research. That means uh, you want, 
when you do scientific research, you, you sit in the lab and you do. At the same time, we have another research where we go to people and ask them questions. Hey, how old are you? Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, how many antibiotics you, are take, you, have, you have taken? Which antibiotic is good? Uh, you take that question we call questionnaire. We go and ask people questions. And then we ask 100 people all these questions and we come, come back and we tell them, hey, you see, all, most of the people are taking this particular antibiotic. That's also research. Okay, you can do this called as qualitative or quantitative research, social research. You are researching humanities. Okay, humanities, they do research. Like you can do, you can do research on Charlie Chaplin movies. Right, people are working on uh, even humanities. Artistic research, you can, you can, you know, in art also you have research, like people look into movies, they look into design. Believe me or not, you can patent. If you design any new IVA, a glass, you can go and patent it. Right, you can, you can create uh, a new dance form, you can go and you can patent it. Your own steps. Yes, so even in fashion, art, arts, Right, so you can do your own research and you can patent it, you can earn money from that. So that means research is everywhere, everywhere. It makes life very beautiful, very colorful. Otherwise, you, your life is mechanical. So research, what is research? Oh, this guy is telling research, research, research. And what is research? It's very simple. You need to create a new knowledge and any new device in your own way. Which, which, which is interesting for you, you can pursue it and you can go behind it. So when you do research, the major thing is maybe year one, year two guys may not understand, but year four guys can understand it because already you are into research. So you need to identify what is a research problem first. Then you need to go and do literature review. Right, how to identify a research problem? I want to do research, I'm a pharmacist, okay. I'm a, I'm a medicinal chemist, I'm a chemist. Okay, for me, identification of research problem means no, we have COVID. So corona is there. Hey, there is no drug for a corona to cure this uh, particular disease, pandemic, there is no drug. That is your research problem, for example. So you need to identify a research problem. Problem is already there, nobody has solved it. Uh, you pick that as a research problem and then you go. So if you want to uh, do more research on that, then what you need to do is you need to go to literature and you need to identify, hey, anybody has done, identified any drug for Corona? You need to go to literature and identify. And hey, what are the different kinds of drugs or vaccines or whatever the things which are discovered for this Corona? Uh, you, you need to do literature review. That means you need to go to library or sit on your computer, mother Google, search everything about the particulars particular problem. Then specifying the purpose of research. What's your purpose of research? Hey, you are looking into Corona, right? Already identified, I'm looking. So what's the specific, because what is the purpose of your research? My purpose of research is I want to identify a new drug, discover a new drug for Corona. You need to specifically, you need to identify what's the purpose. So purpose for you maybe is very simple. I need to identify a drug. But if you are working in a pharmaceutical company, your purpose of research is you need to identify a drug which can give you money for your company. You know, different, different perspective, the purpose is different. Then once you identify your research problem, then literature review on purpose of your research, then you need to check, hey, because Corona, you can tackle from different, different directions. There are so many ways you can discover a drug for Corona. You can have a vaccine. You can have interferon. I think recently, yesterday, Yesterday, Cadilla has come out with uh, verafin, verafin, yeah. antiviral. It's an interferon, right? You need to look into literature. Okay, you can, you can tackle corona with interferon. You can tackle corona with vaccine. You can tackle corona with antivirals. Then what is a specific research question? Hey, in which area you want to do? Uh, you need to identify. Then once everything is done, then you go and start doing experiments. For example, if you are uh, lab-based work, if you are discovering a new drug, then go to lab and start designing a new drug in your computer. You can buy a software called computer aided drug design software. Then you can put into computer, start working on that. Then if you are successful, go to lab, uh, synthesize a chemical, 
Then you give to your uh, pharmacologist. He will check on the virus. Hey, how much the drug is killing the virus? Uh, then you know it, it will follow the process, drug discovery process. And you collect the data. Then once the data is done, all your experiments are done, you all of you guys sit and analyze your data, interpret the data. Hey, your drug is really active on this corona. How much is active? How, what is the mechanism of action, MOA? How much is the toxicity? Can we uh, go to phase, phase one clinical trial, phase two clinical trial, right? phase three clinical trial? Can we market this drug? How much money we can make? Ah, you can, you can sit and analyze that data, all data, whatever you have. Then you report it, whether it is active, can it work, right? Reporting and evaluating research, what you have done. Is it good? Okay, uh, you didn't come up with a drug. Okay, then you go back. You evaluate, you go back. Where you went wrong? Can you start? If it is not wrong, okay, okay, this is totally gone. Okay, can we start restart from some other direction? You can do that. So at the same time in research, you need to communicate. Whatever the research you do, don't sit quiet. Okay, I did research, okay, coronavirus. Okay, I tried to identify a drug. Oh, the activity is 50%. Oh, I just keep quiet. I, I forget, I keep quiet. No, don't do that. So once it is done, the only 50% activity it is showing, but fine. Then you write a paper. Okay, send. Then when it is published, then everybody can go to Google. Okay, okay they can go and see. Hey, this guy already worked on this particular molecule, antiviral molecule. For corona, only 50% activity. Oh, that means I should not go this way. You, you guide other people to go in different ways. Don't think all your research results are positive only. Most of the times it's negative, but negative results are also good. It gives you a lot of challenge, you know, like you feel like, oh, negative, oh, it's okay. You just report it. So other people will not go through that particular area because already know they won't get any results. They won't. So this is the uh, steps how you do research. Okay, this is, this is a very standard format, whether you do science or humanity or, uh, or your uh, artistic research. But only thing is the change is your experiments and data collection. So when you do uh, drug discovery, oh, your experiment is chemistry and computers and pharmacology all. If you are doing social science research, like social pharmacy, you are collecting data from people, right? As a, a social pharmacy person, you go and give your questionnaire to different people and collect the data. Hey, what is the antibiotic resistance? How many people are taking uh, uh, penicillin in Malaysia? Then you have to go and ask all people, 100 people, sample, right? So then you can come back and you can evaluate. Only the experiments are different. Otherwise, the whole steps are nearly the same. Whatever the research you do, it's same. So what are the advantages of carrying research? Why you should do research? Already I told you, right? It gives you a lot of pleasure to you, money to you. So many things. So it gives a new knowledge. When you, whenever you do research as a pharmacist also, it gives a new knowledge. Hey, I tried on Corona. Okay, this drug is not working. It's a new knowledge. Nobody knows it. The new process technology and new products. When you do research, you get new technology. Hey, I had this particular drug. Okay, in the market only tablet was there. No, I, I make into injection. Wow, you change the technology. Only it's available in the tablet. Now you make into injection. That's great. Many people want to, they don't want to take tablets. They want to take an injection form or capsule form or suppository form. Right. So new products, you can develop a new product for Corona. Anything, it may be engineering, it may be whatever. So creates value in terms of money and IP intellectual property. When you do research, you can get money. You come out with a new drug, or you can sell to pharmaceutical company. They give you money. And at the same time, you can patent your molecule. Nobody in this world can make without your permission. So once you patent your molecule, so anybody want to produce that particular drug, they have to come and ask you, okay, I will pay you this much money as a royalty. So you give me permission, intellectual property, right? Many of the drugs we are producing in India, right? All are under IP. If you want to produce in India, any new drug, you have to pay somewhere in US or UK, whoever who have discovered, and you have to buy and produce. Otherwise, you need to wait until the patent expires. Today, patent expires, tomorrow only you can make, otherwise you cannot make. Okay, so that means when you do research, you can create money, you can create intellectual property. Not only your drug, even if you have any data, you study on any patients, something, you come out with a new thing, ah, you, can, you can make money from that 
You can sell to some pharmaceutical company. They want that particular data. I give you data, you give me money. Okay. Okay. Leads to new expertise development. At the same time, when you do research, you become expert. After 20 years, if I come and ask you, hey, this guy, last time, he was my student. He was in year four. He don't know anything. But now after 10 years of research, I go as a teacher, I go and ask him, hey, how, how you do, do this? Huh? Now you become expert, not me. If I don't do research, I'm still the same. But when you do research for 10 years, and you are an expert, I have to come and ask you, hey, how is this? Huh? Then creates positive driving force for new discoveries. For example, if 20 people are doing research, then everyone will start looking, hey, these guys are working on this corona. Hey, we, we also should do some discovery. Right. Hey, this uh, D.Y. Patil uh, College of Pharmacy, these students, they did final year projects. Hey, very beautiful. Okay. They come out with a new molecule. They sell to pharmaceutical company. Why not we? So it creates a, a positive force. So positive force is very, very important. Why we in India, we, we fail in discoveries. Why Western world, they, they, they are successful in discoveries? Because we need to create a positive driving force. I think that's very, very important. We need to create interest in the students in research, not in getting a job and getting money. Right. That's what everybody can do it. Why I should why I should study pharmacy to make money to get a job? I can do any other thing also. Right. So when you put research into your, your, your whatever you do in your career, in your future careers, in pharmacy careers, then you can you can create all these things. Right. So these are the advantages of carrying research. That means everyone has to do research in a small scale or medium or in a high scale. So it has to be done, okay? Then disadvantages, uh, always we cannot talk about positive things. Huh? Even research, we have some disadvantages. It's more time consuming. You guys know how, how, how long it, it takes time to discover a new drug? It takes very long time. Now COVID vaccine, COVID shield and uh, uh, Covaxin, so they have not fully developed. Still, they were doing phase three clinical trial, but still they got emergency approval. Otherwise, it takes a long way. You need to uh, discover a new vaccine. You need to do testing, clinical studies, toxicity studies, right? All those studies, it takes a long time. So it's a very time consuming. So normally more than 10 years, if you're whatever the quick you are, unless you're lucky. If you're really lucky, if you are very expert in your company or with you, your group is very, very dedicated people. You can come out with faster. Otherwise, normally more than 10 years. And you need a lot of money. Yeah? You need a lot of money. More money is needed. But don't think, okay, more money is needed. Oh, I don't want to do research. You can do research with collaborations. With less money also, you can put new ideas. So there is no money is needed for your idea. Idea is always free. So you have a passion. You have a dedication. You have interest you get a new idea, so you can put it, okay? But still, you need money. And more human resource and facility. You need to have a facility, you need to have some apparatus, you need to have some things, and at the same time, more people. You need to have at least three, four people or some people to do collaborative research. So otherwise, in, in if you see pharmaceutical industry, a lot of people, thousands of people will be working in the discovery industry or whatever, whatever the research you do. So these are the disadvantages of research. So that means when you look into disadvantages and advantages, advantages are very lucrative, right? So with this background, we go into pharmacy research. So you guys are in pharmacy program. So I congratulate you guys. You choose the best profession in this world. Whatever the people say, they may say, hey, you are a pharmacist, what they don't know. I have many of my friends there in Canada, in US, they are working as pharmacists. Even the people there in the developed country, Western countries, they go, they talk to a pharmacist. Hey, how do you know about the, all these things? A doctor should, doctor is supposed to know all these things, right? Hey, you're a pharmacist, how do you know about? Then my friends will say, hey, I told them I am the one who studied about all these things for four years. I know everything, I'm a pharmacist. So the society don't know what is the value of a pharmacist. But once you come out of this program, when you graduate from this program, then you really have a passion so then you know what is the value of a pharmacist. Actually, after uh, I also did my pharmacy program, I did all those things. After my experience, I tell you, we know a lot. We know more than a physician, a GP, a doctor. 
we, we a doctor know only about more about anatomy of the body they do they are more into diagnosis we cannot do that because we study anatomy as only one subject i think if i if i am mistaken APHE, anatomy, physiology, health education, we study all in one subject. We may not know much about the anatomy. At the same time, we forget it. We study, we pass, okay, we forget. But doctors study more anatomy. So that's why they, 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 they talk with a lot of confidence. They know diagnosis very well. But you go and ask them what is the side effect of uh, this particular drug, they don't know. They study, like, they study less pharmacology than you guys. You are the one who know more about medicines. You are the expert. In medicine okay so you can contribute in many areas so be confident when you graduate when you go out keep passion okay believe that you are the expert in this particular pharmacy about drugs about medications so about patients okay so you keep that in your mind you're the expert so you can contribute in whatever the areas you choose whatever the areas you are interested you can choose it okay so pharmacy research so when you talk about pharmacy research, there are two things. One is pharmacy is different. Pharmaceutical science is different. Pharmacy means it's more into pharmacy job. Like you sit in hospital, okay, you are interacting with the patient, okay, you are, you are working as a pharmacist. Okay, pharmaceutical sciences. We have pharmaceutical sciences like chemistry, biology, pharmacology, biochemistry. So many things are that, that, that comes in pharmaceutical science. So, but whatever you do in India, most of you guys, when you graduate, you go to industry. I think you fit into this area. But in Western countries all, even in Malaysia, in Singapore, and this part of the world, most of my students, they go to hospital, they become pharmacists. But still, they do research. All careers in pharmacy, we do research. Even Prof. Rakesh Somani also will be doing, he's doing research. He may be a teacher, he may be an administrator, but still we do research. We do research. Okay, research is a component of our profession. Okay, when you look into uh, our pharmaceutical sciences, you study medicinal chemistry, right? Pharmaceutical chemistry or medicinal chemistry. If, if you guys, any of you are very much interested in chemistry, because I know some of my friends, my old friends, when we study, they are very good in chemistry. Like Prof. Raket Somani, who is very good in chemistry. Some, you have intuition, you know, some are very good in chemistry, some are very good in biology. So depending on your interest, you choose your field, not behind money or getting an easy job. Hey, I got this job, I just did it. I, I just go and choose it. No, go behind your passion, go behind your interest. If not today, maybe after 10 years, you will re surely reach the summit, the pinnacle. Okay, if any of you are interested in chemistry, okay, you study year one, two, three, four, okay, you study so many pharmaceutical chemistry, inorganic chemistry, medicine chemistry, one, two, analysis, so many things, right? Uh, that will help you when you come up. What you can do is you can work in drug design. You are a pharmacist. Yes, I appreciate. But at the same time, you study drug design in your program. So you can work in drug design. That means if you sit in front of a computer, you have a software, and you can design new drug. Coronavirus. Okay, you can identify a target and you can design a new drug sit in, in your computer. Some of you may be interested in computers. You may not like biology, you may not like chemistry. Oh, then you choose this job, computational chemistry, where you design your drug by using computer. Many pharmaceutical companies in India, they have a separate division called drug design division, computational chemistry. Uh, never mind. How, some even uh, bachelor in science in computer science. Uh, some people they also will be working in this area. At the same time, pharmacists also majority of pharmacists they design drugs. If you're interested, you you go there. So research in drug synthesis. Some guys are very good hands. Golden hands we call. That means they like synthesis. Right, they take A, B, put into conical flask, boil, heat, okay, they get a drug. Aspirin, synthesis of aspirin. Wow. If you're interested, go for drug synthesis. You can do research. You join research company, or even if you're a teacher, if you're teaching in pharmaceutical, uh, in maybe any institution, yeah, you can do synthesis. After synthesis, you send for screening, then you test on animals, then humans, then 
it can, it can become a drug. Then research in bulk drugs, API. Hey, when you formulate a tablet, paracetamol tablet, right? So what is there inside? You have paracetamol drug. That is a pure drug. You need to first, if you, if you have a manufacturing plant, you're manufacturing paracetamol tablet, you need to buy paracetamol pure drug. We call it as API, active pharmaceutical ingredient. Normally it comes from China because the manufacturing of uh, APIs is very cheap there. And India also, we have a big uh, companies like for example, CIPLA, like Biocon. We, we have many companies which are producing bulk drugs. If you're interested, you go and work there. You are expert in bulk drugs. So at the same time, for example, one drug, to make uh, one drug, you have 10 steps of synthesis, generally now. So the cost of the drug is 1,000 US dollar for one kg. Now you are a very good chemist. You are already worked in bulk drug industry. Instead of 10 steps, you can you make in five steps? Can. I have many friends who are working in that area. Instead of 10 steps, they can make in five steps. They think five steps. So that means for five steps, manufacture, you reduce the cost. So that means your company, you can sell the same drug, one kg, 500 US dollar. That means the whole world will come to you, not to that other people. They want you because you are selling 500 US dollar. Right, so they, they, you can make a lot of money. We call it as process, process research, right? So if not you, you can sell, okay. For example, you're an expert, but you don't have, you're not working in industry. You sell to other people, your technology. Hey, I have five steps. I can make 99% pure drug, paracetamol, 500 US dollar. I have the technology. I will sell you for two, two crores, just sell off. Many of the pharmacies, they did this job. They did process development and they, 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 they become rich. One example is uh, Davis Lab in Hyderabad. The founder of Davis Lab, he studied in Manipal uh, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences. He went to Hyderabad, he started his own company. Okay, so now they are, their turnover is more than 1,000 crores. He is very good in process. 10 step process, he can reduce to five steps. You need to be very good in chemistry if you are good in chemistry, you do research that you can make money, you can make your own pharmaceutical company. So drug discovery and development, the whole process, chemistry, biology, whatever, everything, you, you can work in that particular area. So if any of you are very much interested in chemistry, you, you always try to see where you can go in this particular area. So everywhere, money is there, name is there, interest is there, and driving force is there. The next, natural product research. The chemistry part is nowadays lagging in the world because whatever the drugs you design and whatever the synthetic drugs you have, we are getting a lot of drug resistance. Drug resistance is a major problem in the current world. You go and see TB, you go and see influenza, you go and see um, your HIV, you discover a new drug and give to any virus or bacteria, they are very clever. Maybe within one year or two years, they develop resistance. So that means after two years, if you give the drug to a patient, it cannot work. Same goes to Corona. You are already looking, right? Vaccine. Maybe vaccine may be effective for first, first, first uh, cycle virus. Maybe the virus will mutate. Whatever the vaccine you give may not be effective because the virus is changing very fast. Especially bacteria is not so much dynamic. Virus is very, very dynamic. So they produce drug resistance. So then whatever the synthetic drugs you have may not work because most of the synthetic drugs, they have same mechanism of action. Then you need to identify new drugs which are having a different mechanism of action. So then natural products research is very, very, it plays a very important role because these natural products, they have different, different structures. The structures are very complex. The virus cannot understand it. So even natural product research also, you can go, you can identify plants, you can, you can identify new molecules from nature. It could be plants. It could be, you know, marine pharmacognosy. Like you can go to marine, you can dive deep. There are many pharmacies, many doctors, many researchers who do this job. They go and dive deep into the marine, into the ocean. 
they will bring some animals or some species or some specimens they will extract it they will identify different different molecules i think when you go into market if you see clinically approved drugs many of the drugs are from nature for example taxol taxol anti cancer drug is from plant your quinine plant origin like so many drugs so many drugs are from plant origin if you are working on this yeah you, you identify a new molecule it's done right you can, you can you can sell it you can patent it it's a very interesting area okay you, you can work in this particular area so in this natural uh, product research you will be looking into new active molecules from natural products you isolate them okay what are these things you will isolate maybe in one natural uh, a sample you will be having 20 25 30 different different compounds you separate them then you do nmr everything you identify then you send for testing pharmacological activity on clinical uh, preclinical and clinical and you can you can come out with a new drug it's it's another area some of uh, my friends they are very passionate about going into jungle they go to forest they identify new species they come back they will isolate hey, what are the new things are there they will come out You know, they discover a new new molecule nobody has done in this world. You just imagine you come out with a new molecule. One of my student, PhD student, he he discovered a new molecule, new structure nobody has done. How much happy you are! You you publish it, you patent it, you you feel so happy. Hey, I discovered this molecule. No one in this world has discovered this molecule. First time in my life. So much happy you feel, and you can publish it, you can patent it, you can do whatever you want. okay that, that that that's very uh, exciting then pharmaceutical analysis research this is also very major area analysis i think some of you in final year uh, b pharm right you may be studying pharmaceutical analysis you study uv spectra you study ir you study nmr mass spectra right that means when you are discovering a new compound from natural product how you discover okay you got a new compound a, a new molecule but you don't know what is the structure of that particular molecule right then you need to put into these machines they, they are the magic machines those guys who are still in year 1 right so i can just blindly say they are the magic machines you just inject your sample into that they will give their own spectra a chromatogram or whatever the you can print it in the computer then you can study what is this uv spectra okay go study uv spectra in your analysis module then you know already uv spectra you analyze you interpret the data hey what is this uv spectra hey how may be the structure nmr hey how uh, nmr this is nmr spectra hey how is oh this is a new molecule oh yeah so analytical methods are very very important drug discovery even in clinical right when you when you give a patient uh, some drug right so what will happen to that drug when it goes into the body if you want to know then you need to take blood from the patient then you need to take out all rbc wbc everything then plasma you need to inject into that then it, it you can identify what is happening we call it as metabolism distribution you know adme studies uh, you can it, these are the magic machines even analytical research is very very popular nowadays right so recently i think 2 uh, 3 months before they 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 put uh, in the newspapers in india that whatever the honey they are sold in different different companies you know everything is fake it's not natural honey it's artificial honey most of the companies are selling some artificial honey how they identify it normally you if you if you analyze your honey then you don't have any instrument to analyze honey it will give the same thing oh, sugar is there okay this is there this is there but nmr they did nmr when you do nmr you can identify really whether it is honey or it's a something like sugar syrup syrup from china right so analytical instrument will tell you what is there inside you an analytical instruments will tell you for example you have a corona virus okay you are adding drug you put into your tube and put into nmr it can tell you how your drug is interacting with the virus in, in your computer you can see you can see the simulation so analytical research you guys can work in anal because you study pharmaceutical analysis you are expert in pharmaceutical analysis you know how the machine magic machines work and when you get the spectra you know what is there you can identify you can see it and identify hey, what is this you are an expert nobody in this world know about it maybe some people in analytical science chemistry those who study bachelor in chemistry analytical chemistry msc phd yeah they can do that but still as a pharmacist 
I can bet. I taught pharmaceutical analysis for my students here. My students can interpret NMR. They can interpret mass spectra. They can interpret IR spectra very easily. I give a set of spectra. So what we do in uh, pharmaceutical analysis is uh, we have workshop. In our workshop, we give one set of data. You, we, take, we take paracetamol, we put into UV, one spectra, IR, we record, NMR, we record, carbon NMR, proton NMR, one set. We, we make one group. 30 students, we make 10 group. 10, three students in one group or five students in one group. We make table, five, five students. Then we give all printed things to them. So we have all uh, displays. We ask the student. We teach the students all this uh, analysis. Then we have workshop. In this workshop, they need to identify what is that particular drug, aspirin, paracetamol, or whatever. And those who come out with first, okay, they, they, they immediately they write down on the screen with the computer, everything connected, right? They write, oh, this group, how many problems they solved. We give them special book badges, right? So it's a very interesting thing. So once you know the interpretation, everything, then you can become experts and you can work. So in analytical sciences, so analysis of new drug molecules by various analytical techniques, you can work in, an, in pharmaceutical industry as an expert. You are an, if you are an expert in HPLC, people will be running behind you. In India, you have 10 years experience in HPLC, LCMS. I guarantee you, maybe any, you can get job in any country in this world. Okay, so if you, any, any of you are interested in analytical chemistry, analytical pharmaceutical analysis, go into this area. Okay, you, you can make a lot of money. You can get a very good job, very stable life, and you'll be doing a lot of research. Then pharmaceutical uh, technology. This is very, very important. Huh? As a pharmacist, we are in technology. We call in India pharmaceutical technology or pharmaceutics. Maybe you have tablet, capsule. Like if you have a drug, new drug in tablet form, hey, you make into a capsule. You make into an injection. Done. Right. Different, different uh, thing. Now you can see, right? Vaccine. Uh, now Covaxin. Covaxin is given as an injection. Now the Bharat Biotech is planning to give Covaxin as a nasal, uh, nasal in through nasal inhalation. Very easy, right? So formulation. Hey, you have a vaccine. Can you make into injection? You are a pharmacist. You are the one who is making that. Okay, Covaxin. Okay, can you make into inhaler? Then no need to inject to the patient. Call the patient. Okay, inhale. Inhale. Okay, go. Next patient. You are the one who know, we teach you in pharmacy program, how to formulate, how to formulate injection, how to make injection, hands-on. In the lab, you go to lab, you make injections, you seal the injections, you make a suspension, you make tablet, you make capsule, we teach you how to do it. So then you, you, you will be working there and you are doing research, right? So pre-formulation studies. So before formulation, what happens to the drugs? You can work in that particular area. In, formula, in pharmaceutical technology area, you can do stability, uh, stability study of formulations, different different formulations, pre-formulation studies, and novel drug delivery system. Hey, you have a drug. I'm giving inject two injection. It's very painful. Hey, can you make into a transfer patch? Yes, you can make a patch. You need not to take a drug, antidiabetic drug. Morning when you wake up, okay, everything done, shower, everything, okay, take a patch and put on your skin, go. Immediately it will release first dose. After five hours, it will release second dose. Night again, it will release third dose. Done. You need to take a tablet. Not all drugs can be formulated with a novel drug delivery system, but can, most of the drugs you can, you can deliver. But in India, we won't get it because it's more expensive. We don't want to spend money. Hey, I can't take tablet, right? I just a tablet. I don't want to do that, right? But still, there is a lot of scope. You can, you can, you can go for novel drug delivery systems, nano drug delivery, right? You have a transdermal drug delivery system. You have any problem with the eyes? Ocusert, Ocusert. You just put into. Why you have want to take tablet? If you take tablet, the drug will go to whole body. But you have a disease in glaucoma is there in in the eye? Why you want to give drug to a patient? It will go to the whole body, and ninety percent of the drug is wasted. 10% only goes to the eye. So make an Ocusert, novel drug delivery system. So directly you give drug to the eyes, right? So if you are working in technology, then you'll be 
going through all these things. You can work in all these areas. Then pharmacology. Some of you may like to handle animals. I know last time my friends, some of my friends, they, they like very much, very easily. They go catch rat, catch frog. They do experiments. I'm, I'm not sure uh, 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 whether... Sir, whether sir, you... Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. Sir, you have some questions. Sir, I, we have some questions. Please check out check box, chat box ones. Okay, we stop at this point. I uh, We discuss questions, uh, then we no. go, right? Sir. Uh... No, no. Uh, Dr. Dr. Sir, 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 please. Mm -hmm. Sir, please. Yeah, you can just uh, have a look to your personal chat box. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, so please look to it. Okay, okay. Okay, please check. Okay, 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 okay. That's great, that's great. Okay. okay. So in pharmacology and biomedical science, we have, uh, you know, where we, we have a drug, so we can, we can try those drugs on animals, right? In vitro studies, in vivo studies, toxicity, ADME, vaccine development, so pharmacovigilance, that means when you give drug to a patient, what will happen, any side effects happens. So we can report and we can work in pharmacovigilance, we can check. So all these things, if you are very, really very much interested in pharmacology, you, you, can, you can work in any of these areas, okay? Uh, then pharmacy practice research. In India, not much developed, but in Western countries, some of you may be interested to go other Western countries, you can do pharmacy practice research. That means you'll be working as a pharmacist in a hospital and still you can do research. You can collect a lot of data from the patients. You can ask questions to the patients. They will answer to you. You can collect a lot of data and you can use the data and you can take your own decisions. So we call it as pharmacy practice or hospital pharmacy research. But in our country, in Malaysia, Singapore, all, most of my students will be working there in the hospital. So they, they, discuss, they, they, they talk to the patients, they collect a lot of data, and they use that particular data for informed decisions. When they make decisions, doctor make decisions, they use that data, okay? Clinical research, I think some of you, you know, right? Already we talked about clinical phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials for the vaccine, COVID vaccine. So we, that means we test our drugs or vaccines or whatever the biological products on human beings. So again, clinical research, a lot of pharmacists are working in clinical research. So here you design your own clinical trial, then you go to the patients, you, you bring the patients in, you carry out the whole clinical trial. So we call it as clinical research associates. So as a pharmacist, you are an expert. Nobody in this world can do this clinical research job. You. So you with nurse, with doctors, you'll be coordinating with so many health officials, uh, then you'll be doing clinical research. Okay, so here also you can play a major important role. Then community and social pharmacy research. I think in India, it's not much developed, but still you are working in a community pharmacy, like a, uh, you know, we call it as a uh, drug store, right? So there also you can do research. You can collect a lot of data. You can talk to patients, you can help them. You can discuss with them the problem. You can solve the problem. They appreciate you. But in Malaysia, we collect everything, a lot of data from them. And we do counseling. Like we are something like a psychologist, huh? like we talk to them, if, any, if they have any depression, we discuss with them, then we tell them how to take the drugs. So many of the things uh, we can do as a community and social pharmacy research. So community and social pharmacy research, we do survey, we collect data, then access and use of medicine, how the people are using medicines, what kind of medicines they're using, then uh, how much people pay for medicine, hey, which medicine is expensive, which is cheaper, we get all the data. Then we help the elderly people how to take medications. Then how culture affects the uh, medicines. Like, you know, uh, we, uh, in Malaysia, it's a, it's a Muslim country. So here, most of the uh, things are halal, right? So culture also affects the, how the people take medicines. So we, we study all these things when you're working in a, in a drug store. In India, we just, okay, we just dispense, okay, we take money, but here, in India also, you can do that. You can, you can contribute. I have seen many, many pharmacies who they are very, very active. They talk to people, they counsel the people. Uh, in UK, we have a healthy living pharmacy where the people, you know, the pharmacists will help the people in all aspects. Then some of you can work in regulatory affairs where, you know, like, uh, because uh, the pharmacy profession is highly regulated by the government. The drugs, everything is regulated by government. 
the drug controller office is there you can you can work as a drug inspector but don't think drug inspector you can just go and do normal job you can do a lot of research when you're working as a drug inspector also okay regulatory affairs so you guys are expert regulatory affairs pharmacist has to work there and if you really more, uh, want more knowledge then you do masters in regulatory regulatory affairs we have many uh, pharmacy schools they are offering this program you can you can do masters in regulatory affairs then you can work in regulatory affairs not only in india you can work in us fda you can work in many many countries i have many friends who work in us fda don't think okay oh you are studying in one corner of india somewhere okay you don't have access you can go anywhere in this world once you finish your program once you are knowledgeable with experience you can move anywhere in this world okay the next is data analytics even nowadays it's coming a lot of data we both are sitting on zoom right zoom already has captured how many people are there it already you know narendra babu is there on zoom artificial intelligence they know what i am doing i on my my gps they already know where i am going today where i went morning afternoon where i went everything is captured by google same thing in our health data a lot of health data is captured when you, whenever you go to any government office hospital they take all your data right your phone number everything and even all your diagnosis data your what kind of drugs you are taking everything is recorded a lot of data is there in computers in different government in hospitals in pharmacy so much of data is there you know you go to any pharmacy nowadays they ask you right hey uh, you become our member what is your phone number okay you give your phone number we give you 10% discount okay once you they enter they already know what medicines when they bill you already they know what are the medicines you bought they already know what kind of disease you have it, this is called data so a lot of data is there now by using the data can we can we use a particular data for any beneficial purpose so a lot of pharmacists are working in this health data you have data in hospital you data in pharmacy you have data in imaging specialist all the people they have data on you on your disease on your analysis so many of my students they are working in health data analytics it's it's a it's a boom coming nowadays okay in future maybe after 10 years everything is artificial intelligence you guys may be working in this particular field so in future you may be working in health data analytics okay so health data analytics we, we is used for so many purposes huh? you can go through my slide so it's very very uh, beneficial and you guys will be some of you will be surely working so just uh, have a glance and if you are interested just pass through then supply chain and blockchain management nowadays we we had a conference i'm sorry yeah, just one more minute uh, yes, supply chain and blockchain management so i think in india also you have uh, Mm, when you buy a, a, a medication, a drug, you can see the barcode. You can see okay where it is manufactured. When uh, nowadays it's 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 going everywhere. So in the in that particular area, supply chain. So how the drugs are moving from manufacturing until the retailer? How it's moving? How it? At what time? Okay, manufacturer send the drug. Okay, at when when it will reach the distributor? When it will reach the retailer? When it reaches to the patient? so you can you can you can track everything in your computer so we call it as supply chain and blockchain management so by doing this process we can we can we can whatever the contradictory medicines we have if anything which is spurious medicines we can control right because everything barcode everything will be there we can just scan and you can see hey this medication is is it really it's a good medication is it a this particular brand when it is manufactured is it a spurious medication so you can identify you are you are so in this particular area so in future pharmacists are, are working but here in this part of the world already our students are working in this particular area they are working in blockchain and supply chain okay they are do, doing coding decoding how it is moving and all those things they are doing that so you can control the counterfeit medicines so at the same time you can you can see where the drugs are moving how much is the demand how much is the supply so everything you can so now you can see in india right so we have shortage of oxygen we have shortage of remdesivir why because we don't have proper supply chain we don't have blockchain management we don't know how many people are using it we don't know how much drugs are used what kind of drugs are used by uh, patients 
how much demand is there exactly so when you have a supply chain and blockchain management you can see the supply you can you can create new supply when there is a more demand at the same time you, you can see whether it is a it's a good drug or it is a counterfeit drug everything you can control the whole process so in this area we will be working as a pharmacist you guys will be working so these are the so many different areas not only as a pharmacist will be working in a hospital you will be working in all these different kinds of area and all these areas are very exciting very rewarding and very satisfying so you guys always keep in your mind you are a pharmacist you are the person who is having authority on the knowledge on medicines so have the confidence and you study your program in a very uh, responsible way so not only earning money it's not anybody can earn money anybody can have a job anybody can leave so one day we are going to die but the question is that so how much uh, impact you are giving to the society so how much contribution you are going to the society how much how many people lives you are changing every day are you talking to a patient you are telling him hey don't worry about it okay this is a drug okay you need, you need to take every uh, every day three times i hey, don't worry i am i am there for you okay so uh, how much impact you are you are creating on your society on your family i think that's very very important okay then you have always have a research implicit you keep everything whatever you do you, you may be a pharmacist in the hospital or you may be working in chemistry department or maybe in clinical trial regulatory whatever you have that inquisitive research hey, what's happening why 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 i cannot contribute in this way so keep a research component in your profession and keep moving and my suggestion to you is don't stick to one thing okay the the times are very dynamic they will be keep on changing so today tomorrow you may be a pharmacist in hospital but maybe after 10 years there may not be a job hospital pharmacist job so you may have to become a community pharmacist and maybe later you may have to become an academician teaching so but still wherever you go you are a pharmacist keep the research component with you and keep that uh, zeal with you and contribute to the society okay and you have uh, you have all the opportunities in future it may take some time don't worry but you you put consistent effort and just move on okay so uh, it looks like i took uh, more time i apologize for that um i thank you all of you uh, for your precious time you are sitting with me here uh, and i am very happy to see any questions there yeah i think uh, you can de share your slides first of all so that uh, the screen will be visible and then uh, Uh, i'm seeing in chat box uh, i have not received any question in the chat box so far but if uh, uh, umesh sir tumhara kai mail aale ka questions nahi sir no question ah, okay. no question sir so yeah yeah so uh, uh, dr narendra can you de share your slides first of all yeah students please feel free to ask questions because it was really a, a wonderful talk and he has covered uh, you know plethora of Uh, uh, opportunities in research, right from the basic research to the application, particularly uh, till data analytics, blockchain, and uh, uh, most importantly, the supply chain management. So, in fact, for me also, there was a lot of new information I gathered from this talk. So, if there is there are any question, please unmute yourself and ask. We have five more minutes to ask the questions, and then uh, uh, we'll go ahead accordingly. So I would like to request all the students, please, uh, on your video, please. Switch on your videos for a nice photograph. Video, please, yes, please, all of you. And meanwhile, think for a question also. when i was a student also i never ask any questions <laughs> don't worry <laughs> uh, any questions please students please feel free to ask the questions please, please. yeah if you don't want to ask even you can put into the chat box yeah yeah it's okay I think I have a question. Is it a question? 
scope in novel drug delivery system. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they say, yes. Uh, yeah, novel drug delivery system. Yeah, always there is a scope. If you, if you look into the pharmaceutical companies, they're always uh, working on novel drug delivery system, but may not be for Indian market. They are always working for a foreign market because they get a uh, custom order, like they, are, they will be doing contract research. Maybe somebody from a Western country, uh, they will be asking for a novel drug delivery system and surely you, you have a big scope for that. But most of the time we, in Indian market, we always uh, go for maybe uh, solid dosage forms like oral or whatever uh, that is very standard because novel drug delivery systems you you need to spend more money yeah, if you want to buy so it's for a big population like india it's very complicated uh, but novel drug delivery system is always going on in the pharmaceutical industry and it's everything is new it depends on your ideas if you have a new idea always you can try uh, dr narendra i have a question on behalf mm -hmm. of students probably if they are not able to ask, I have a question. Uh, what do you see uh, uh, the future of pharmaceutical research going into direction in the next, uh, uh, which direction in the next 10 years down the line? What is your analysis about it? Uh, if you look into the Indian uh, pharmaceutical industries, we are more into contract research because we, we don't want to invest much money on the new research. We get a project from the outside uh, countries, from some companies, and we do the research for them and we submit and we get the money and we just keep quiet. So whatever the, um, it happens, especially the current year, last year and the current year, when the corona came, right? So there is a big scope for pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And the major uh, factories of this world is India and China. So always there is a scope for pharmacy and uh, research in pharmaceutical sciences. So another 10, 20 years, we cannot deny, we cannot see any uh, negative growth. It's always a positive growth. Yeah, but any, any specific area which you would like to highlight, as you mentioned, for example, data analytics, pharmacovigilance. So any, any specific area students should uh, look into the future. Uh, if you... <laughs> If you look in that perspective, then, uh, you know, if uh, I see with my experience, uh, things got their own life cycle. Maybe at one particular point, mm. maybe clinical trials were very huge. That time, clinical, uh, there, is a, there was a huge demand for clinical trials, uh, clinical pharmacies. So I think things are moving up and down. So that's why what I said in my presentation is uh, follow your instinct, what you like. What, in which area you're interested. Nothing is up, nothing is down. So things are moving up and down, but still you are there. Okay, if you are interested in chemistry, join chemistry. There are a lot of areas where you can contribute. There is always a demand. Okay. Um, everywhere, everywhere you have uh, job opportunities. Chemistry or your pharmacology or regulatory affairs or clinical trials, everywhere you have. But if you are asking about data analytics and supply chain management, so data analytics is a new coming field and supply chain, supply chain management may not need a lot of pharmacies, uh, but data analytics is going to take uh, a big role in future. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, if, Umesh sir, if there are no questions, please take it further. Sir, I have one question. Yeah. Mm. So this is uh, out of curiosity or out of concern I'm asking, sir, you. Sir, uh, this is for current situation. We are facing COVID uh, pandemic. Sir, uh, do you think you, as you mentioned, Verafin is a new drug came. Verafin is a new drug came in the market. Sir, is can this drug change some situation or it is good uh, as compared to we say Remdesivir or some other drugs? As you are, as you are, you belongs to research, so that is how I am asking, sir. This. I think I saw in the in the literature um, the drug which was uh, approved uh, from Cadilla, right? Yes. Sir. So it's an interferon alpha two. Interferon. Yeah. It's not a new drug. It was oh. already uh, it was there in the market from, if I'm not mistaken, 2011 or 2001. Yeah. yeah. 20, 20, 20 years plus. Yes. So this is a drug new for Indian market. Indian market. 
with a new formulation. The Cadilla has formulated in its own way and it, it is marketing. And as per the literature, they are telling, so it may improve the mild conditions. Mild COVID. And mild. it may, it may. So it's, a, it's an emergency approval. That means they are thinking it may improve. So it is better than death. Okay. When you take a patient's uh, perspective, so it is better uh, already in the secondary stage, mild condition. So this may improve the situation. That's why they can give, but not uh, scientifically uh, well established, not proven. So that's why they have given emergency approval. Okay. Sir, uh, I one supplementary question I have. So about remdesivir, so it is good for uh, mild condition patients? Remdesivir. Again, it's the same, same, same question. And at the same time now, this virus is not really well studied. This virus is very tricky because most of the virus are very tricky. <laughs> so you tell me any drug which is, uh, which is very successful on any virus. Mm. No, because virus can mutate very fast because you, ident you discover a new drug for virus, the current uh, strain, maybe after one year when it comes with, an, when it changes, evolves and becomes a new strain, this drug may not be active. So, at the same time, these drugs are very uh, specific. It, de it depends on the patient's uh, condition and patient body, very subjective. Uh, that's why we in, uh, in this part of the world, we call it as personalized medicine. That means each drug dose depends on different person. That means the drug dosage for you and me is different. And the way it acts for you and me is different. So what we do is uh, here we teach therapeutic drug monitoring. For example, when we give anticoagulant to a patient, for you, how much anticoagulant is uh, required is different from me. So that's why when, when any patients comes to the hospital, when they give anticoagulant, they will give first, then later they will, they will use HPLC, they will analyze, hey, how much is required for this particular patient? We call it as personalized medicine. Even anti-cancer drugs also same. It depends person to person. So they will analyze for each person how much drug is required, hey, how much it is active, they will do that. So remdesivir is also uh, same issue. So Thank you, sir. I have a question, can I got for medicinal research after B form or only after M form? Uh, uh, normally, yeah, you can go after B form also. You can join some university or any institute like, uh, you know, in Pune, you have uh, chemistry, NCL. You, you can research, like, uh, if you're really interested, you can, you can go and ask anyone, hey, can I come and do research with you? Uh, after B form also, you can do. Even you guys should look into summer programs. You know, many of the, in India, many of the institutes, they offer summer programs. That means you have holiday, three months holiday. Ah, you can go and apply to somebody. You are interested in medicinal chemistry, right? Oh, you can go and uh, see a hey, National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. Hey, which, uh, this guy is very good. Huh? Ah, you send email to them. Mm -hmm. Hey, these three months I am free. Hey, can I come and work in your lab? Yes, it's research. You can go and do your research there. Even they pay you and they teach you how to do research. You'll get knowledge. But most of the companies, they expect you to do master's and form and go for research. Uh, because they think bachelor's is too, the knowledge is uh, too shallow. They want more in-depth knowledge. But there is, there is no inhibition. Huh? If you're really interested, after B form also, you can go. But uh, with M form, you have more maturity and more analyzing skills. Your thinking is more mature. So that's why most of the companies and most of the people, they want you to do a postgraduate program. Otherwise, you can talk to anyone. If anybody is working on that, you can just say, yeah, I, I want to do research. Can I come for three minutes? Okay. Another question is a scope in R&D. Yeah, R&D is always there is a scope. Where your, your, your seniors are going, most of your seniors, seniors are going in R&D only. Manufacturing is a very, uh, very routine job. But still manufacturing, you can become expert. Like with your more experience, you can, you can, be, you can go to the you can, you can climb the higher ladder. Huh? But at the same time, research is more like you have more experience till you are very young because every day you have a challenge. It's very interesting. Yeah. Always there is a scope for R&D. In India, most of our students, they go R&D. Don't think R&D is only uh, chemistry or biology. You are, you are in regulatory affairs, it's R&D. You go clinical, it's research and development. You're working in research and development. 
You are going analytical. It's R and D. You are going data analytics. It's R and D. You are you are you are, you are the first time you are doing that. It's everything is R and D, right? Most of you will be going for R and D, hundred percent sure. Mm, yeah, is metallurgy uh, and one of the good field of studying? Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, when I did my PhD, I was working on catalysis. I did I did work on catalysis. Catalysis in the sense when you are working in pharmaceutical industry, for example, you are doing a ten step reaction to synthesize a drug. So many of the reactions are oxidation, reduction reactions. All when you are doing reduction reaction, oxidation reaction, you do a lot of catalysts. Catalysts are nothing but zinc, magnesium, palladium, platinum. We use gold. Platinum is more expensive than gold. You know, we use platinum in kgs. Very very expensive. Ten thousand US dollar for one for one kg, and you'll be using. So yeah, we, metallurgy is there. Yeah, you, if you're interested in metals, you can do wonderful research. Why not? Instead of ten steps, you can make into five steps. You make one pro. Yes. metallurgy but direct metallurgy you study metallurgy and come to pharmacy in research may not be a direct scope but if you are interested on metals how they work and all yes you can you can apply that in chemistry field yeah and if you are mistaken uh, I, i don't know about you guys what subjects you are studying when i did my bachelor in pharmacy i, I studied chemical engineering uh, a, a, a lecturer from engineering school he was a chemical engineer he used to come and teach us so what he used to teach is metallurgy he used to teach us how to design reactors reactor design so metallurgy right many of the metals we are using even in analytical science you know you use electrodes when you analysis of your drugs we use electrodes you know that oxidation reduction reactions are we analyze you take your drug okay dissolve in a solvent put two electrodes you measure everything compute in computer then computer will tell you what's the purity of the drug 90% 99% mm. yeah so sir uh, i think we should conclude now yes ah yes i have uh, one more question sorry yeah i don't yeah, want yes, to no, 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 i just okay. one minute uh, yes, nuclear pharmacy research in india mm, i think the future in india yeah we always uh, i don't have much knowledge there but in malaysia uh, we teach nuclear pharmacy as one of the module and uh, we have a nuclear pharmacy in one of the hospital and we have our students who are working there they are working there they manufacture a uh, very short half life nucleo nu- uh, nucleo uh, nuclear medicines that means uh, you uh, most of the nuclear medicines you can import their half life is very long but those very short half life you need to produce in your own hospital when you are working you need to produce immediately you need to use on your patients so many of my students are working there uh in india the yes, scope is always there we are using but may not be you need to compete a very rare field you need to go and you need to compete that no, so i'll you... just uh, i'll add here uh, brc uh, has itself a separate department of nuclear medicine and mm-hmm. they actually do lot of research uh, into nuclear medicine at uh, mumbai in fact yes and uh, in, when you talk about research i have one of my friend who is working for roche in uh, switzerland so his job is uh, they do uh, they do radio liganding you know they the 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 peptides they connect with the radio ligands and they they check uh, they they do the imaging of the body like lungs imaging of your heart so he he do research on that particular field so if not you may not get a job as a nuclear pharmacist but surely there is it's a big field diagnostic is another area where uh, i missed out uh, as a pharmacist you can work in diagnostics development of diagnostic and one of my friend is working in switzerland and yeah always there is a scope yes umesh sir huh. please take it okay. Okay. sir i am here to thank uh, what of thanks so i would like to thank uh, dr narendra babu for taking out his time from their busy schedule and enlightening us with the knowledge thank you sir thank you so much i would like to thank dr somani sir for giving permission for organizing the seminar thank you thank you so much sir again i would like to thank all the participant present over here because without them this could not be possible
to attend this seminar webinar and uh, make it successful thank you all thank you so much all for attending this seminar and thank you sir thank yeah, you thanks. so thanks everybody and let's meet on next saturday at 4 pm again for the next round of discussion into a summer webinar series thank you dr narendra for your valuable guidance and suggestions thank you very much for all of your precious time and thank have you. a nice weekend thank you thank you sir thank you sir thanks